Let's explore Simpson's paradox, which is also known as the Yule-Simpson effect. This is a concept from statistics that may initially seem counterintuitive, but once you look at the data, it starts to make a lot more sense. We will define what the paradox is about, demonstrate it in the context of baseball batting averages, and identify two reasons why the paradox happens. So let's begin with the premise. So it would be reasonable if you look at two independent trials and you have a hypothesis that works for those two independent trials, then when you combine the trials into one trial, the same hypothesis will hold true. That is a reasonable premise However, Simpson's paradox says that this may not always be the case. Let's look at Simpson's paradox in the context of Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig's batting average. Over the, uh, their career, they overlapped for a few years in the 1920s, and these are some legendary players who won multiple World Series. So Simpson's paradox is a trend that appears to be present when the data are considered separately in this case batting averages being considered separately but the trend disappears or reverses when the data are considered together let's look at their batting averages for a three-year period in 1923 Babe Ruth had a large number of at-bats but you'll see from his batting average, 392, 378, and 289, he did not perform as well as Lou Gehrig, who, whose batting average actually was much higher, 423, 500, and 295. So for this three-year period, Lou Gehrig had a higher batting average than Babe Ruth for three consecutive years. So just looking at this data you would conclude that Lou Gehrig was a more dominant player, was a better player. But this is where Simpson's paradox comes in and all we're going to do to this table is add an additional row at the bottom demonstrating the total batting average over this three-year period. Now when you look at Babe Ruth's total batting average of 361 on the bottom row, it is significantly higher than Lou Gehrig's batting average of 307. This is counterintuitive because in the previous slide we concluded that Lou Gehrig was better and he showed to be better for three consecutive years. But when the data were combined, it turns out our conclusion was completely wrong. Babe Ruth was a dominant player and by a lot. Now why does this happen? This happens for two reasons and the main reason applies here. There are differences in sample sizes. In other words, Ruth had a much larger number of at-bats compared to Gehrig. Gehrig was in the first uh, three years of his career didn't have a lot of chances while Ruth was truly at the prime of his career. There is an additional reason why Simpson's paradox may happen in other situations where there may be a lurking variable. That is, there is another reason why the relationships exist or don't exist and that relationship is not directly being measured. Now, just to give you a conclusion to this story, uh, both players played for a long time, mostly for the Yankees, Ruth did play a few years for the Red Sox and their career batting averages were superior to their peers 342 for Babe Ruth and 340 for Lou Gehrig. Now you'll see they had almost the same number of at-bats but Babe Ruth was still dominant when you compared the total hits divided by the total at-bats over his 22 year career. Ruth also won one more ring in the World Series than Gehrig, uh, although they were both inducted into the Hall of Fame. 
So if you were to make this argument of who was better, I would say Babe Ruth has a slight edge because he also contributed as a pitcher and showed his dominance on the mound as well. For further reading, please take a look at some additional books and papers that explore the question of Simpson's paradox not only in baseball, but also in basketball.